Hey everybody, the Bong is here, ready to give you a brand new Let's Play! Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Duel Stories for the Game Boy Color. And this is brought to you by GameAnyone.com. Alright, this is my third ever Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's Play, and I remember renting this game before and playing this on my GameCube, which had a Game Boy Player at the time. Let me tell you, this is a very interesting game, and if you played Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories for the Sony PlayStation, you would be able to catch on to this game quite easily, because it functions just like that. Alright, let's start a new game, shall we? Delete save data, yes. Welcome to the world of Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Duel Stories. Before you start, input your duel name. Uh, okay. I'll enter my name in all caps, of course, because I can. Yes, this name is okay. Okay, what I meant to say that it functions a little different from traditional Yu-Gi-Oh! is that you have type advantages and type disadvantages. Okay, there's my stats. I have a deck volume of 400, meaning I cannot have more than 400 capacity points onto my deck. Each card has a certain level and how much points it adds up to. If your deck goes over 400, you can't use it, and you have to use weaker cards. My dual level means that I can only enter cards that are at least level 15 or lower into my deck. Okay, let's go into construction. What this is, is that whenever you defeat someone, you get a card part. What a card part is, is you take two card parts, put them together, and create a whole new monster. They're all 4-star, I believe they're all 4-star, no, I think some are a bit higher, but they cannot go over 2,000 attack points or 2,000 defense points. And you can create many different cards that way. Okay, before I go on, I might want to enter a password. This is the password mode. You don't say! Enter your 8-digit password. This is where you can go to add cards to your deck based on what card you have. On a traditional Yu-Gi-Oh card, if you look around the corner, you should see an 8-digit number. You can input that number to get a card. As long as it was there at the time this game was made. To get a special password, just enter 65437205. You found me! From now on, I guess I'd better give you cards. That is why I enter that code. Whenever you beat someone, Taya will give you a card and a card part. Thanks to this password, not only does she give me one of each, but Solomon Moto also gives you one of each. In other words, you're getting two cards and two card parts now for each one you have. Right now, these are the only five I can take on. Tristan, Joey, Mai, Mako, and Yuki. Now, I'll start with Tristan first. Hiya, oh, my name's Tristan. You gotta win five times, you know. Think you got what it takes? Yes, you had to defeat each opponent five times in order to get to the next tier of opponents. Okay, right now, this is my deck. Let's look at Sinister Serpent, for example. As you can see, its card number is 475, and its cost is 5. Meaning, since I'm at level 15, I'm able to put this card in, and it adds 5 to my capacity. Right now, I have a total amount of levels equaling 354. So I can add some good monsters and get rid of some bad ones. Just remember, you might want to have a very concise deck. Because the best part of this is fusing some of these monsters. Remember, you don't have polymerization, therefore you have to take monsters that are compatible with each other to create new monsters. If you played Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories, you know how the fusion system works. Alright, it's my turn. Okay, let's see... I think I'll summon... Mystery Hand. And put you in defense mode. And press B, then end my turn. Aha! Caterpillar! So you lose 250 life points. Okay, the thing about fusing is you have to find cards that are compatible with each other. 
You might think it's easy, but at the same time, it's not. You may not always know what cards go with each other. Let's see... Would Forest and Fiend go together? I don't think so. I think I shall summon... Wretched Ghost of the Attic in attack mode. Might as well attack that Caterpillar. It's just a matter of knowing what cards are compatible with each other, and it takes a lot of practice. Unfortunately, that is the case. Okay, if you're wondering about the type advantage or a type disadvantage, remember there's two types of cycles here. You got your elemental one and your dark and eat, your good and dark one. As you can see, it goes like this. Water beats fire, fire beats forest, forest beats wind, wind beats earth, earth beats thunder, thunder beats water, and so on. And that's how it goes. As far as light and dark, that one somewhat confuses me, but I'm sure we'll manage. Alright, let's see. Can we have anything that goes well together? Probably not. Wait, forest and earth. What if I combine these two? Fusion of Gale Dagra and swordsman from a for foreign land created Cockroach Knight. So that was a fusion that goes well together. But I can't summon it. Therefore I have to bring in Frog the Jam in attack mode. Remember, you have to remember what fuses well together. But let's say you have a very powerful monster and you want to create, like, Bean Soldier that has 1,400 attack points. If you have a monster that you're trying to use as fusion material with more than 1,400 attack points, it won't work. So remember, you can't fuse to create a weaker monster. Uh, Buku... It goes well with that. Sadly, some of these things I don't remember all that well. Well, I'm pretty sure I'll put in the whole Fiend, Dreams, Light, and Shadow cycle in the description. That way you won't get confused. As I will. Okay, so far so good. Now remember the whole thing about type advantage and type disadvantage? is that it allows you to instantly defeat a monster, even if you have lower attack points or defense points. Unfortunately, in Tristan's case, if he had Caterpillar out on the field, if I used a wind monster to attack it, it would automatically lose. That's the sad part. Okay, I got a bird. What happens if I take Droll Bird and Buku? Ah, another fusion! Spirit of the Book, with 1,400 attack points, that's pretty good. In other words, take like a bird monster with some kind of some mage or something, and you get this. Pretty cool, huh? If you get used to it, you'll have no problems. And you can bring out some very powerful monsters, too. Which is a lot better than an alternative than using your regular monsters and doing very terrible damage. Until you get better cards to add to your deck. I'll have to take a lot of getting used to the combinations. I'll bring in Spirit of the Books right now. Eh, just an Uguchi. Good thing I didn't have a fire monster. Otherwise, I would have instantly lost. Yeah, finish it off. There we go! Got the first win! This time, you get a card and a card part for construction! You won! So you get a card part, and you get Dark Piercing Light! All monsters on field are exposed. They go from face down to face up. But it costs me nothing to use, which is pretty good, if I care to use this card at all. I present you with a card part and Fake Trap. A dummy trap card with no effect. 
That means I can fool someone into not attacking when really I got nothing. Or it just means that it cancels out an attack. I never really used Fake Trap. Okay, let's take a look at my record now. I went up to level 16 and a deck volume of 405. As for construction, seeing as how I got a car cart, actually chest is for like all the monsters that you created and you can disassemble them to use again. Okay, right now, I for lower body one, what do I have? Okay, nothing for lower body one at all. What about upper body one? Okay, froggy. So I have a froggy whatever goes with lower body one, which I don't have, unfortunately. Lower body two. Okay, the thing about this is you can only match up upper body one with lower body one cards. You cannot take upper body one with lower body two. It doesn't work. In order for me to use red flower for lower body two, I need something in upper body two, which I don't have. Therefore, I cannot create new cards yet. It's all a matter of finding which ones are well compatible with each other, because you can create really good ones, or really bad ones. Just that I warn ya. Okay, I think I'll take on Yugi next. I'm Yugi! Nice to meet ya! Let me explain a few things. Collect cards and parts by dueling. There are duelists at every stage. You have to beat each one five times. That's how you advance. Um, good to know. And as far as your chest goes, whenever you see a card either on your side or on your opponent's side, at least once, it will show up here. In other words, it will not be blank. So the more cards you create or see from your opponent, the more of this you can fill out. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, Yugi gets to go first. Put it in defense mode, okay. Oh, I can create Spirit of the Books again! So I think I'll do that right now. But I can't summon it. Therefore, I'll have to bring in Gale Dagra. There we go. Your move. Whatever. Okay, let's see. Marlis Radiant could probably go with some cards, too. But I'm not gonna use it yet, should I? Nah. I'll just attack. Huh, <laughs> Key Mace. Then I'll use Spirit of the Book to attack you, directly. Alright, your move. Oh, you had a forest card. That takes out my Spirit of the Book immediately. Um, let's see, uh... Should Marlis Radiant go with Zone Eater? Or, let's see... Let me take you. Okay, there's no compatibility. Let's see, I guess I'll have to have Gale Dagra attack. Since they're both forced. It's all a matter of experimentation. I don't know every single combination, even if I could look online. It's just a matter of studying, and it can be very difficult. Uh, let's see. Let's take Abyss Flower and Starboy. That did not work either. Just remember to take your best one first, otherwise you'll end up destroying it through fusion. That fails. I'm still experimenting, getting used to all this stuff. Okay, I don't think they'll go together. What about Jinzo number 7 and Legu? Okay, that did not work either. I better have another monster on the field, because I can't get to his life points this way. Okay, I think it'd be a good idea to summon Abyss Flower. No, let's Gale Dogra attack first. Just a Mystic Lamp. 
There we go. Would this flower would be a pretty good monster. Now, let's see. I can probably consider combining Jinzo 7, number 7 with Aramar and Nefariousness. Oh, we got a fusion! Gigatech Wolf. There we go. Now I'm starting to catch on. Uh, what about Hero Shadow Scout and Zone Eater? Nope, no fusion. But at least I'm getting rid of my weaker monsters. I'm keeping the best ones. Once you get used to like the different types, it gets a lot easier. Gigatech Wolf is also forced. So I got a whole lineup of forests. Hopefully he doesn't have a wind card on the other side. Or I could be in trouble. So considering the setup I just had, machine type and a type of beast, which is Aaron Marmot and Nefariousness, can create Gigatech Wolf. That's a little combination that can help you out. White Dolphin? Uh, what about White Dolphin and... Let's say... Turapurin. Nope! No combination. Change Slime, that's pretty weak. Okay, good, good to know that I have a monster with 1200 attack points on my side. Gigatech Wolf gets another direct attack, I win. Huh. Did Mystery Hand go with any of these? White Dolphin and Mystery Hand. Nope, no compatibility. I'll probably have to practice this on my own time get a better understanding of what goes well together and what doesn't. I haven't been able to use every card in my deck yet. Gee, I lost! Pretty good! Did you know I beat my Dark Half? And Pegasus too! Not bad, huh? I don't care. I get Honey Honey. Nice. It's a Beast and Wind card. Uh, Deep Sea Shark! Nice! I finally get a 5-star monster, and it only costs, like, level 25. But considering that I'm only level 18, I cannot use it. Luckily, you go up a level and deck volume even if you lose. Y you just won't get a card if you do lose. Alright, I'll stop the video right here. Next part, I'll take on the other three opponents, if I got time for all three. See everybody.